Good morning and welcome to St. John the Baptist. Before we begin our celebration of Mass, please take a moment to silence or turn off all cell phones. Please join together in singing our entrance hymn found in the Missal number 128, Faith of Our Fathers, number 128, found in the Missal. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Christ have mercy. 
Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, Woe to the complacent in Zion, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches, they eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall. Improvising to the music of the harp, like David, they devise their own accompaniment they drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called 
when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler who will make manifest at the proper time, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and to whom no human being has seen or can see. To him alone be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We want to welcome Father Augustine, uh, who is uh, visiting us for a short time to tie up some loose ends. Uh, you can say hi to him after Mass. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to refresh my tongue, for I am tortured in these flames. 
Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. In our Lord's parable, we are presented with a description of the de- dreadful reality of hell and those who go there. Our Lord had elsewhere suggested that the number of the damned is not small, saying, the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. Anyone who does not remain in me will be gathered to be thrown into the fire, and they will be burned. He also said, An hour is coming in which all those in the tomb shall hear my voice and come forth. Those who have done right shall rise to life. The evildoers shall rise to be damned. And so we understand that everyone, including the condemned, will experience a bodily resurrection. Every human soul will be returned to its material body. For the righteous, this will be a joyous reunion because their bodies will then begin sharing in their soul's heavenly delight. But for the condemned, this reunion will only serve to share the suffering of their soul with their body. The Church teaches that our individual judgment at death will be repeated at the general judgment for the purpose of displaying to everyone the indisputable proof of God's justice when he says to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed of my father, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Our Lord describes the fire of hell as everlasting because those who enter will remain there forever. This is why Dante, in his epic poem, The Divine Comedy, portrays the words inscribed over the entrance to hell as saying, Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. The reason that hell lasts forever is principally because our souls last forever. Our soul is a spiritual entity, not made up of parts that could break down over time. Because there's no material components for the stages of decay to act on, the soul is literally indestructible. Only a refusal by God to maintain a soul's existence any longer could destroy it. However, such a refusal will never come, since it would imply the correction of a mistake, and this is something a perfect being would never need to do. Even the condemnation of sinners serves a purpose in God's providence. The person who maintains their sinful state all the way through to their death is deserving of an infinite punishment because they offend an infinite God. Human beings are limited creatures in every way but one. Namely, we will live forever due to the nature of our soul. Therefore, the only thing we have to give which could repay an infinite offense is our eternal future. It is this infinite duration which is the most mysterious thing about hell. In his writings on hell, St. Anthony Mary Claret, after describing the fire, the darkness, and the hatred that the occupants of hell are subjected to, He says that the most terrible thing about these punishments is that they do last forever. Forever. That is a difficult concept for us to grasp because it is outside of our experience. Our whole way of thinking is governed with respect to time. To give us a better appreciation of it, St. Anthony assumes as an example that Cain died unrepentant after killing Abel way back in Genesis. He writes, Suppose that Cain, weeping in hell, shed just one tear every thousand years. So for six thousand years, Cain has been in hell and has shed six tears. How many years would pass 
before his tears would form a puddle to fill a barrel? How many years would it take for his tears to fill all the valleys of the earth and flood all its cities and towns? How long would it take to cover all the mountains and flood the whole earth? He goes on. The distance from the earth to the sun is 34 million leagues. How many thousands of years would be necessary for Cain's tears to fill this immense space? And yet, be sure that a time will arrive when his tears will overflow to such a degree. But that's not all. If God were to dry up all those tears to the last drop and Cain began to weep again, one tear every thousand years, he would again fill the same space and fill it a million times over. After all those countless years, not even half of eternity would have passed. Indeed, not even the smallest fraction. After all that time burning in flames, Cain's sufferings would be just beginning. The reason we consider these topics as dark as they are, is primarily to deter us from sin. The youngest of the Fatima children, Jacinta, after receiving the vision of hell, said she wished everyone could see it, because if they could see it even briefly, they would never sin again. Describing the vision, the eldest child, uh, Lucia, wrote, we saw, as it were, a sea of fire, and in this sea were the souls of unrepentant sinners who turned and tossed about in this great conflagration amidst the great sound of groans and shrieks of pain. Certainly, if one were to meditate on this occasionally, they would pay more attention to their behavior. Another reason to consider hell is to better realize how evil sin is. God's choice to give us a free will made it necessary for him to create such a place. We have the ability to act in ways that can lead us there, and in fact, this is our natural tendency. This is why we are given many warnings in Scripture and from the Church. And so, like the rich man in today's parable, we should not expect to receive any additional personalized warnings. But because God loves us, he does send us more than enough grace to make the right decisions, so we can be certain that any soul which is condemned had willingly rejected God's will in favor of their own, and therefore they chose their fate. Sometimes people question how a loving God could send anyone to such a place. But it is not God who sends them. God takes no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked, but he does allow it in order to fulfill the order of justice, which requires it. God respects the free will he gave us and will not force us to obey him, even if it leads to our separation from him forever. Another thing people question is how even one unforgiven mortal sin would incur such a terrible fate. St. James wrote, whoever keeps the whole law but offends in one point is guilty of all. It is not a matter of how many times we have sinned but the fact that we refuse to act, ask for forgiveness, which reveals the fatal nature of our self-love. It is this stubborn clinging to self-love which continues to defy God, which is the cause of their eternal separation from him. And so let us pray that God would continue to show his mercy on us by not allowing us to perish if we should slip into a state of sin. May he grant us the grace to always remember our last end, that we may not spend our eternity weeping, 
but rather singing the praises of God for all eternity. Let us stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess <clears throat> baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life. Conscious of the many needs of all God's children, let us present our petitions to our loving and merciful Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, may they always remain faithful and courageous in their ministry of preaching the truths of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who exercise civil authority, may they continue to promote true peace and justice according to the laws of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Catholic families, may they be strengthened in their love for God and for each other, and so be witnesses to the world of the power of God's plan for marriage and the blessings of children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering, especially Roxanne Cup, Donnell Malugin, Margaret, Margot McLaren, Anthony Mantione, and Gary Perkey. May they receive comfort and strength in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, especially Deborah Green and Alexander Mueller, May they be welcomed into the joy and peace of eternal life with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions submitted to our St. John's Prayer Line Ministries and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also <clears throat> pray for the repose of the soul of Armando Lozano, Sr., for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving God, pour forth your Holy Spirit upon our world, that we may come to know your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Our offertory for him is found in the Missal, number 131, For the Beauty of the Earth, number 131, found in the Missal. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our first communion hymn is found on the Missal number 247, Soul of My Savior, number 247, found on the Missal. Found in the hymnal, number 653, See Us, Lord, About Your Altar, number 653 in the hymnal.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to those whose sufferings we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The announcements for this Sunday. Please return all the pro-life bottles next weekend, whether they are filled up or not. Uh, we will reuse those bottles for the drive next year. And thank you for your great support for life. Our Knights of Columbus are having their breakfast burrito sale after the Mass. Coffee, juice, and water are complimentary with a purchase. Uh, come and get your breakfast burrito for the long drive home. All proceeds will go to help pro-life organizations and clinics. Beautiful, also beautiful religious goods are on sale outside the church after mass to support our parish religious education program. So please take a look at those. And for all the other announcements, kindly check the bulletin or your parish website. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.